People all over the country, including here in northeastern and central Pennsylvania, stop to observe Labor Day. And the big Labor Day telethon here at Channel 16 will tell you how much you gave to help Jerry's kids. Plus, the family that races together to stay together. I'm Nolan Johannes. And I'm Karen Hart. News Watch 16 update is next. Everything you want to know about outdoor life Saturday. This is the news station, WNEP 16. There were all kinds of ceremonies uh, to mark today, several events that took place. The Labor Day holiday all across the country, including here in northeastern and central Pennsylvania. In downtown Scranton, hundreds of people turned out not only to celebrate Labor Day, but to show support for shipyard workers in Poland. It's the third year in a row the Solidarity Day ceremonies were held in Scranton, and members of several local labor unions turned out for that event. It was a different kind of Labor Day ceremony at the Anthracite Museum at Lackawanna County's McDade Park. A couple dozen people showed up to dedicate a statue honoring those who labored in the coal mines. The statue is called The Miner. It's a tribute to the suffering that coal miners in our area went through. And as Newswatch 16's Dan Fiorucci reports, some people who still work in the mines are blaming the government for today's labor problems. Oh God, master work. Oh, well, they say don't give any of your just peace. In other words, any any appeal for anything that they just go along with sometimes for like two years. In other words, the government can use just the courts or uh, administrative uh, rules or what have you to keep the worker down from joining a union, even if he wants to join a union. And Semko says Governor Thornburg hasn't helped matters any because he supported the president to the detriment of the miners. This administration has, uh, wants to be no part whatsoever with any kind of union busting. At the same ceremony, Lieutenant Governor William Scranton denied the charge. We have to work with the working people to turn Pennsylvania around, and uh, if there are specific instances of union busting of, with which the United Mine Workers, or any other union for that matter, has a concern, uh, we ought to work together and try to resolve them. Scranton says he's trying to revive the mining industry in the state by encouraging the development of fossil fuel plants, plants that use clean burning anthracite coal. The lieutenant governor says that if he's to be successful in his efforts to bring King Coal back to eastern Pennsylvania, he'll need to have the unions with him, not against him. Dan Fiorucci, Newswatch 16, Taylor. I'm Mike Stevens on the Pennsylvania Road for Newswatch 16, and I meet a lot of interesting people. A maker of some interesting gadgets. A very special group of bell ringers. A builder of some very fine furniture. Competitors in a rather unusual contest. Those are just some of the folks I've met so far. I hope you'll join me for a visit with some others on the Pennsylvania Road on Newswatch 16. Well, you've done it again. All of you people here in northeastern and central Pennsylvania who opened your hearts for Jerry's Kids. WNEP-TV's Muscular Dystrophy Telethon raised a whopping $460,714 over this Labor Day weekend. And it was all because of you calling in and pledging your dollars for those who suffer from muscular disease. Your local contribution helped the national total to top last year's. Nearly $30.7 million will all go to the fight against muscular dystrophy. We also had a very special person help us with this year's telethon. News Watch 16's Susan Jellig appeared here at our studios, her first appearance since she was hurt in a traffic accident several weeks ago. We'd like to thank Susan and all of you who pledged money and helped out to make this year's MDA telethon a giant success. And aside from all the people inside our studios helping to bring you this year's telethon, we had quite a crowd outside, too. News Watch 16's Mark Davis mingled with the people at Miss Judy's Carnival. Kids, when it comes to Labor Day and Miss Judy's Backyard Carnival at the Channel 16 studio, kids are what it's all about. Hundreds of children and their parents came from many areas of northeastern and central Pennsylvania. They all came here for the same reason. We wanted to donate some money and help out where we can. And we're from Pittston and uh, it was close for us to come here. And just to help out in any way we can, you know, donate a dollar or two. Help the kids and everything with the uh, M&D and see everybody and all the sights and 
everything I have for the children. We came down because it is a lot of fun. There's a lot of activities here for all family members, the, the carnivals and everything. But basically, it is for a good cause. It's for the muscular dystrophy for Jerry's kids. You certainly don't have to be a child to enjoy a carnival like this one here at Miss Judy's. And you certainly don't have to be a child to understand what this is all about. It's for Jerry's kids in the fight against muscular dystrophy. Mark Davis, News 16 at Miss Judy's Carnival outside the studio. And getting funds for that fight was made more difficult for those of us here in our studios for the telethon. The culprit, a compressor for this building's air conditioning. On the hottest Labor Day on record, with hundreds of volunteers working under hot lights, we made an appeal other than money for Jerry's kids at one point. Could anyone spare an air conditioner? Hazelton's Leonard Enterprises and Boscoff's in Wilkesbury said you bet, and soon our electrician had a whole battery of coolers doing their best to keep up with the heat of the hour. They helped by heavy-duty fans offered us by Sacred Heart Church in Plains, Holy Rosary in Duryea, and Wesley Village. Thanks to an early morning response by caring people, hundreds were a little more comfortable during that almost 22-hour telethon. This has been an exceptionally warm summer and a warm Labor Day. And as Nightbeat reporter Bob Costantini says, some people in our area hate to see it go. In music, there is one small business very sorry to see such a summer go, this ice cream stand. It was a good summer. Summer was real hot, and we got what we wanted. Business was good. You sorry to see it in? Yes, I am. Sundays floats cones. The hot weather has brought the customers out eating more than the usual amount of ice cream. A little bit more than last year with the heat, trying to get away from it, cooling off anyways. And with people getting in their last licks, it's a time to look back on the summer now ending. Yeah, it was an enjoyable summer. Uh, had a good time lounging around the pool on the days off. Uh, trips to amusement parks, uh, involved in local softball leagues. But it's time to start thinking about cooler months, even for those who don't want to. Oh, I dread seeing the winter come. I hate winter. Oh, the snow and everything. For now, though, one last look at a summer when everything seemed to melt. Bob Costantini, Newswatch 16, Music. And he didn't even bring us any ice cream back I either. I know it. Is he oh, in trouble? Oh, boy. <laughs> well, coming up next, meteorologist Tom Clark will tell us how long our hot weather will last. Plus, a little later, the family that, uh, well, races together stays together. We'll explain that one as Newswatch 16 update continues. Serving all of Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania, this is WMEP-TV. While many of you spent this Labor Day relaxing, it was back to school time for one local college. Nearly 600 undergraduate students at Marywood College showed up on campus today, marking the start of another school year. After orientation at the Scranton School, it was off to dorms or perhaps a tour of the campus for new arrivals. There's no break for the students, however. Classes at Marywood begin Tuesday morning. Ah, uh, yes. And if you be real quiet for five seconds, you'll hear that battery of air conditioners we were telling you about a little while ago. It just so happens they are right in the path of our camera that ordinarily shoots the weather outside with meteorologist Tom Clark. So because of the air conditioning, Tom is inside tonight. Not because it's warm outside, but because you it's can't get out It's probably cooler outside, too. I kind of wish I was outside tonight. Uh, the thermometer here and the light's 83 on the set here. Oh, All right. I feel That's it. Without the roof air conditioner of course we have the units in the back but uh i think it's about 90 in my office though <laughs> <laughs> anyhow a little bit warmer out here than what it was uh well last week when we had the air conditioning working you have to go back to 1959 to find uh, the record high temperature that was uh, broken today 89 uh, back in 1959 for labor day we broke it by one degree today it reached 90 this afternoon out in the backyard. Let's check what it is out there now. It is a very muggy, sultry kind of night outside. Probably not too far from 74 in uh, outside your window now, but look at that humidity way up to 80%. The wind's now calm and the barometer is holding steady. And the high today was the record of 90 even. And uh, again, that broke the old record of 89. And the low this morning was 63. The record low for this date, a chilly 43 set way back in 1906. A look at Newswatch 16's color satellite photograph. Record high temperatures broken today from Maine southward to North Carolina. 86 up in Caribou, Maine this afternoon. That broke the record. And 96, a sizzler down in Baltimore 
this afternoon. You can see just some high clouds over Pennsylvania. You have to go way out to Wisconsin and southward across Missouri to find a cold front that is moving very slowly in our direction. Uh, I'm sure you're hoping it might get here tomorrow. Well, it won't. It's going to get here about Wednesday and then cool things down back to near 80 degrees. It looks like Wednesday and Thursday. But another sizzler coming again tomorrow as the airflow is coming from the southwest where it was in the 90s again today across Indiana and Illinois. Some severe weather in Iowa tonight, some baseball-sized hail. You can see some of the bright clouds up that way with that cold front. A few tornadoes reported and uh, some thunderstorms down in Iowa and Louisiana with hurricane force winds down across the Gulf Coast states with some severe thunderstorms down that way. You can see the bright clouds along the Gulf Coast. Let's get to our forecast for the balance of tonight. It'll be hazy and warm. Look at those low temperatures, hardly lows at all. 68 in Tawanda, about 68 down there in Pittston. Hello out that way. 65 in Hazleton, about 70 in Sunbury, 69 the low in Williamsport. Watch out for some dense fog tomorrow morning. And it will be hot, hazy, and humid tomorrow. Sorry about that. Look at the high in Tonkanic near 90. 87 in Mount Pocono, a little bit cooler there because of the elevation. 92 Berwick, 94 in Sealands Grove, about 90 in Jersey Shore. And watch out, there could be a few thunderstorms around tomorrow afternoon and evening. Now look at Wednesday's high, only about 81 degrees, lots of sunshine, a few puffy clouds, more comfortable, lower humidity. Thursday, the same thing, a very nice day, about 79 degrees. Friday, we pick up some more clouds, about 77 for the high. So please, dress right again tomorrow. It's going to be another sizzler. We're going up close to the record high of... Uh, yeah, look at this. I agree. <laughs> 93 is the record tomorrow set back in oh, 1922. No. We're going to come close. Oh, my. Uh, in other words, to, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you said to dress appropriately. I don't know if bathing uh, suits are called suits for on the center. Fine. <laughs> right. I will allow that. Bathing tomorrow. suits for oh. Karen. It's up to 87 now. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> 87, it's, it's um, climbing even. Everything from white water to black powder to beavers, biking, and bows, from copperheads to white sails to casting, calling, and crows. You'll see stalking fish, fixing poles, rainbow trout, and snowy owls, setting traps, drilling holes, earthworms, and waterfowl. Whether you're a fan of the eagles, browns, bears, or giants, or of Joe and Stan and the Mountain Man, or some Tom Duck, or Harry, watch hiking, frying, riding, tying, skiing, and flying on Pennsylvania Outdoor Life, Saturday at 7. Bad news tonight. First of all, for people in this studio, it is now 88 degrees. It's going up fast. <laughs> sauna bath. Huh? Yeah, sauna bath. Also, some bad news for Philly fans. Right, Tim Carlson? Well, I'll tell you, the Phils did it again tonight. I don't know how they do it. If we can make it through with the voice I got here, we'll give it a shot right <laughs> okay, now. Try. We're in bad all shape. Right. National League. There's the score. 6-5 Mets. St. Louis took a doubleheader from Pittsburgh, 7-4 and 7-6. The Bucks and Expos tied for first. The Cards are a half a game out. What a race there. Montreal scores 7-3 over Chicago. Al Oliver with a grand slam. Atlanta beat Houston 7-5. The Braves are a game and a half back. San Francisco over Cincinnati 3-2. And San Diego beat L.A. 5-2. Well, no change from last week in the Associated Press College Top 10. AP has Penn State dropping all the way to number 20, as a matter of fact. Let's take a look at all of them right now in the top 10. First, you see Nebraska on top again, Oklahoma number two, Texas number three, Auburn in the fourth slot, Notre Dame at number five, the second five, Michigan, Ohio State, North Carolina, USC, Georgia, and there's Penn State at number 20. Say goodbye to John McEnroe in the U.S. Open Tennis Championships. The brat dumped in four sets today by Bill Scanlon. The number 16 seed in the tourney. McEnroe, the number one seed going into the match, seemed annoyed with a number of calls in the crowd. Now he's not going to have to worry about it anymore this year. Women's winners today, third seed Andrea Yeager, number five Pam Shriver, Sylvia Hanuk of the number seven seed. And the Labor Day results from Pocono Downs. Daily double one and three of 52.60. Fifth race triple six, five and one, 224 and 70. And let's take a look at the best time to throw a line in tomorrow. That looks like 6.30 a.m. and 1.45 p.m. Hopefully you can get out and have yourself a good time. And we'll catch you Saturday with more sports. Joe's on back tomorrow night at 6. The brat had to be a brat today. He was such a good kid yesterday. Yeah, I guess it just had to catch up with him. Yeah, he had today. some bad calls against him, but he controlled himself. I was amazed. Yeah, and he even, uh, he even he doesn't like Scanlon, really. Yeah. And he even had some kind things to say about him after the match. Kind of All surprising. Right. He can go home now it's and enjoy his money. It's amazing what maturity does, yes, isn't it? it is, isn't it? <laughs> See you Thanks, later. Tim. Thanks. Still ahead, a family that, uh, well, it's got, they have racing in their blood. <laughs> We'll reach the finish line with that story yeah. when we come back. How high will you try? $16,000 can be yours weekdays at 4.
Finally tonight, there are all kinds of things that families can do to stay together. Newswatch 16's Craig Stevens found one family in Clinton County that has found togetherness in boat racing. This is the George Benyak family of York. They are here together in Lock Haven for the 10th annual boat regatta. You might call them a racing family. They go to races like this all over the country. 21-year-old George Jr. has been racing boats for five years. His father, George Sr., raced 16 years before teaching the art to his son. The Benyaks think races like this one have brought them closer together. You'll find that the kids, the majority of them by far, are really good kids. And every weekend they spend with parents. Well, I help out with my dad and the boat, my brother. And usually the pit crews are a family. So you stick together. Most everybody helps out. Uh, sister helps pit and stuff. And dad does almost all the engine work. I just drive. Mom just sort of sits in the background and worries a lot. While the racers pound around the mile and a half course, the father and son are preparing their boat for the next race, working together as a family as mom and other relatives watch on. Uh, all the aunts and uncles, and there are usually about 20 people have come to Lock Haven just to see George race. For the Benyaks of York, boat racing is more than just a sport. It's a family affair. Craig Stevens, Newswatch 16, Lock Haven. Boy, that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, it does. Yeah? But you can keep cool that way, too. Yeah. Oh, we incidentally. <laughs> I, we're not asking for sympathy or anything like that. It's just that, you know, Tom brought this in, and it was underneath the desk where the lights weren't, and it was 81 degrees. It crawled up to 85 degrees by the time he left, and we just looked at it now, and it's 92 degrees in and here. And it feels every bit of it. Yeah. Oh, finally, they're putting a fan over here what, for us. a fan? <laughs> A fan? Who says a fan? Where's there a fan? I don't see it's a fan. It's not on, though, so it's not going to do us too much good. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, all we can say is that is our report for Labor Day. Karen, it has been quite a day. It sure has. We raised a lot of money for Jerry's kids. Right. Absolutely. Good job. And coming up next, Ted Koppel and Nightline with more on the President's speech tonight. For the team, we thank you for joining us at this late hour. And good night. <laughs>